I reach out and I say, hey, would you be interested in interviewing her because there's some LGBT scenes in her music video? And he's like, yeah, sure. Um, do you want to do the interview? Hey, it's Josh, and welcome to my room at the Salt Spring Inn. This place is so cute, and it's a historic building, kind of like right in the center of the main town in Salt Spring Island, so like the water is right there. Uh, everything around here is awesome. Um, Heath is out exploring right now. I want to make this quick video before we check out of this hotel to share my excitement with you. So this is sort of random, but cool, and a bit odd, maybe, but when I was in high school, I loved Wickfield. And most of you probably are either like, who is that? Or, oh, I think I remember that name. So she was a singer in the 90s, but continuing since then, but big in the 90s with the song Saturday Night. <laughs> big bubblegum dance pop tune. And it was bigger in Europe, but still had success in North America. And then from then on, I just followed her career. I'm not even, I can't even explain to you why I became such a fan of Wigfield, but I just was like the biggest Canadian fan of Wigfield, I swear. And I went and saw her like three times in concert because she'd come with other dance acts. And I would literally like travel hours to go see the same, like two of the concerts were the same. One was in Calgary, one was Edmonton, which was a three hour drive apart. And I would just drive to them because I wanted to see her that bad. And I ordered, like mail ordered a t-shirt with her picture on it, hoping that I could get an autograph from her, but I couldn't. But anyway, so I followed her career for like 20 years, which is a long career, especially for somebody in the dance world. But um, she kept every now and then coming out with a new song. And then recently she switched to her real name, which is Sani. But um, I've just been a fan of everything that she ever puts out. And then, I create, um, going back a few years ago when Facebook pages started, I created her Facebook fan page. I was like the first one to create a fan page for her because again, it's just sort of a random thing. Um, and it was sort of, it like grew as the biggest page for Wigfield. And her record management company reached out to me and said, hey, we want to make this the official page. Can you make us admins? And I was like, oh my gosh, that's so cool, yes. And then I did, and at the time they had the ability to remove other people as admins. So shortly after that, they removed me. So I no longer had access to that page. It was now their page. They were able to just take it over and kick me out. But I wasn't really bitter, because I'm like, whatever, I understand I'm some random guy to them. And as long as it helps Wigfield, it's all good. Um, and so then I'm following her on Twitter, of course, and I'm like liking everything that she tweets. And then all of a sudden, out of the blue, the other day, she direct messages me on Twitter. I guess she looked at my profile because I was liking everything. And not that many people like her stuff on Twitter, honestly. Um, and I say that, you know, I'm in Canadian media. So she asked me if I have any contacts at magazines because she wants to launch this new music video that she's got. And she gives me a private link, like password protected link to go watch the music video. So one, I'm like, oh my gosh, this person that I, I don't wanna say idolize, but like I've been a huge fan of for 20 years, over 20 years, haven't ever been able to get an autograph from, let alone like communicate with, um, is like, hi, can you help me out? And I'm like, oh my God, how am I supposed to help out? Like, you know, I'm in media because I do my travel videos on OutTV, but that's about it. And I'm like, hey, yeah, let me see who I know, what contacts I've got. So I go on Facebook and I'm like, somebody help me out, I need to help. Wigfield, I need to get in her good books. And uh, then I think like, okay, in the music video, there's actually some sort of LG LGBT scenes, depictions. So I reach out to somebody I know at Gay Calgary Magazine. Again, this is sort of like random small, but in Calgary, Alberta, there's a magazine for LGBT people, it's called Gay Calgary. And I reach out and I say, hey, would you be interested in interviewing her because there's some LGBT scenes in her music video? And he's like, yeah, sure. Um, do you want to do the interview? interview Wigfield but we don't know at this point if it's just like email some questions and she'll write back or what so I'm like yes yes I do but I'm just about to head out on a whole bunch of travels so I'm like I don't know how this is gonna work it's like my busiest month of the year ever maybe it's just been a crazy month but anyway um, I'm like yes let's figure this out so he emails her management company and he's like, yeah, Josh Reimer's gonna interview um, do you want it like email or a phone call or Skype video and he the manager emails back and says, let's do a Skype video. 
I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going to talk to Wakefield and see her like almost having like one-on-one conversation almost in real life. <laughs> and uh, so we set it up. And of course, again, I'm traveling, so I have to do it from a hotel room, but we get it all going and I get to sit down and chat with her for like 10 to 12 minutes. And it's amazing to my little teenage brain. I mean, it's not still, a, well, it's kind of still a teenage brain. Um, and I get to ask questions I've always wanted to ask, and I get to ask about the new music video, and she gets to talk about being an LGBT ally, and it's just blowing my mind. And so, of course, when the Skype call is over, I'm just like, did that just happen? Did somebody that I've just been such a fan of for so long, a couple of decades, have a conversation with me? And she blew me a kiss at the end, too. Blew my mind. <laughs> So um, that article, I'm sure by the time this video goes up, is going to be available online. I'll put a link to it in the description below. Uh, thank you to Sani, she's now known as Sani, uh, for doing that interview with me. And in the interview she said she might be coming to Canada with Aqua, who sang Barbie Girl, to do a little Canadian comeback tour of the 90s. And she is. I have a ticket. I'm going to go see her in concert again. It's the little things, people. It just make life worth living. So I just wanted to share my story with you. Who else am I gonna share it with? Heath is like, cool, great. I gotta tell everybody on YouTube. So thank you for watching and we will be back on Tuesday with a new video from another destination. So I hope to come back then. Subscribe if you're new. Leave a comment below, click the like button, tweet at Wingfield, <laughs> do whatever you wanna do. <laughs> Bye.